May I have your attention, please? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Be quiet, please. <laughs> so, what is fairness? Well, as Google describes, the moment you type in what is fairness, it means impartial and just treatment without discrimination or favoritism. Or, as a Cambridge Dictionary describes, it's to treat someone in a way that is right or reasonable, or to treat a group of people equally and not allow personal opinions to influence your judgment. In a nutshell, it means to be, uh, to be neutral, to follow the rules, and to not show any bias to either side. This trait is heavily respected in every community as a whole, and fairness itself is crucial to any traditional uh, system that uh, is uh, that worth. Uh, I'm sorry. And fairness itself is crucial to any traditional uh, system worth its reputation. But ain't nobody got time for that. What I'm here for actually is to tell you that we, as a human species, are not fair. We're not fair to the plants. We're not fair to our animals, and we're not fair to ourselves either. And why is that? Well, I'm going to be frank with all of you. The reason why we are not fair with everyone is because A, fairness is subjective to everyone. B, we put our targets, our definitions, our goals above others, and C, the perks of unfairness. And a warning here. If you think this is going to be a talk where I will solve every single problem I just list, then you are already wrong. I'm going to tell you, as a cynic and a relative realist, what I think is the truth of unfairness. I'm sorry. Because the truth is uncaring and unfair. Now, let's get to that first. Fair warning, some examples going to get pretty political. So bear with me if uh, politics are not your cup of tea or coffee. <laughs> so, now, the reason I say that A, A we are unfair because it, it, fairness is objected to everyone is because fair, fairness itself is too boring. Now, at the beginning of this talk, I said the meaning of fairness. What I didn't say, however, is the fairness of what? W-H-A-T. That's the key word. Remember that. Because that what is much more, is much more powerful than fairness itself. Yeah. Now, let's get to an example. Uh, well, hold on for a second, please. Okay, oh, sorry. <clears throat> now, there are two main, sides, uh, two main sides of the American uh, political system the left and the right, or liberals and conservatives, respectively. Liberals, uh, I'm sorry, not, uh, both, of them, uh, cares about, uh, both of them cares about fairness, but the what here is important. Liberals cares about uh, the fairness of payment, or minimum wage. It means that whatever you do as, a, uh, as an employee, either you be a productive employee or be lazy, you will get at least a small amount of money as payment. Conservatives, however, cares about the fairness of employment, aka equal opportunities to get a job. You, get, you will get as many chances and opportunities to get an employment, but once you do, it's no longer their concern. Now, both of this system is, uh, is um, works both in practice and in paper, but the what here, the interpretation, caused a lot of uh, conflict in the internet and on the outside world. I'm not going to touch uh, identity politics and social justice because that's the pain of the subject and somebody will explain in full details later. Uh, for example, as you can see, is that painful? Uh, another example. As a parent, you may or may not heard screams of "It's not fair!" in your uh, parenting life. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Well, at the, in that moment, in that moment, your child may have a different what than you. 
In that moment, you became an oppressor. But you go on with your life because in that moment, you as a parent have different what than, you, than your child. In that moment, your child become a spoiled brat. And in that moment, both of you adhere to point B. We put our interests above others. So, now to be fair here, we are dead. I have never seen someone put others' interests above themselves. None, nada, zilch. We're not paragons, we human beings and humans are imperfect. And if, and people will, people will rise and will raise their voice just in order to let their voice heard. And 99% of the time, they will react violently if it is not. Their spring is a great example of this. As you can see, as you can see here, the air spring is the result of many. Of, it's an event that. Uh, I'm sorry. The air spring is a result of many citizens who perceive that their government is a corrupt dictatorship. Safe dictatorships, however, kept kept the country stable for years. And to be honest, we only heard the voice of the citizen. Did we ever hear the voice of the government who kept this country stable? Did we? No? No. Thanks. But point B isn't that as black as I put them to be. Sometimes humanity moves on because some voices were heard above others. We evolve morally and scientifically because some, because some progressive voices are heard above um, some more conservative voice. The Arab Spring is a great example of this. And speaking of the Arab Spring, I would also like to talk about point C, the perks of unfairness. Or, as I like to call them, money, money, money. Now, Egypt used to be an auto-terrorism country, and now it is a failed example of democracy. And you can thank corruption for that. You have people going around basically forcing citizens to bribe them in order to get basic services for ex like uh, policemen or firefighters. And those people will use this, the commoners' money just to either buy mansions or exotic um, uh, stuff or to bribe politicians to push their own agenda. Now, how about Saudi Arabia then? Saudi Arabia has this system they call the kafala system, and it basically for basically forces every employee into a slave. Because as a foreign employee, you have to give your passport to your employers, and they can effectively turn you into a slave uh, uh, by say holding those uh, uh, passport and keeping and holding that paycheck of yours. As you can see, when you hold back that pay, your uh, employee's paycheck, you got the whiff of that sweet, sweet money. And money is power, and power corrupts quickly. I mean, and to be fair here, none of us are above corruption. None of us. And if there is, that number is drinking. We use it to get around anyway. Search so around the web and you will see a plethora of examples of corruption. Now, what can we do to restore fairness then? This is the part where you are waiting for, right? When we will solve everything and anything for the benefit of mankind, huh? I'm sorry to tell you this, but um, Aside from combating uh, corruption by having better institutions, we pretty much don't have anything to do. Unfairness is embedded to our DNA. And some people will feel oppressed at some attempts of defining fairness and they will stand up and they will react violently. Mark my words. 
because unfairness is embedded to our DNA. It is in, in our nature. And we can't just defeat nature. All we have to do is to embrace it because the truth is unfair. Thank you for listening.